Okay, this is like my fourth time trying this video. I keep messing up and I'm trying to make things as homogenous and organized as possible. So this is part two of Auntie's Microphotic Channel Design Simulation. Um, this is the meshing part. Um, in the geometry, um, one thing that we had to go back and change from part one, uh, which I had messed up, if you're following along, uh, is that basically this width I had set to 50. And I had also set the distance between the axis and this wall to 25. That was wrong. We need to set this width here, which I believe was V2. Yeah, V2 here, we can see. Uh, we want to set that to... 100 and we want to set L1 which is the distance between this axis and here to 50. This will stay 50 but essentially this is going to fix uh, to make sure that this setup is 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 identical to the um, the first simulation that we did okay so once you fix that the geometry we should be able good to go the recording yes okay um, so next thing we want to do is we want to open up the mesh. So I'm going to click edit. Now, um, I had done this a few times and, um, I reset everything. So hopefully when I come in here, it'll be fresh. Um, defaulted to what you, you will see. And it looks like it is. So it's going to load in the geometry. You know, if you just give it a minute and that's loaded in. Um, first thing we want to do is we want to name our selections, or I'm sorry, name our sections. So you can click this uh, thing here, face, control F, or just click the face. You want to left click on this face, right click, and create name selection. Okay, so this is, the point of this is to create, um, to let the system know, um, the selections and also this will help us later on when we're doing the inflation um, and doing the boundary conditions later in the setup. So create name selection. This one was um, oil inlet. So you can do O inlet, you can do O oil space inlet, you can do oil underscore inlet. I like to do oil underscore inlet and uh, it's just my preference. Click OK. Uh, we're going to click this section. Okay. Right click. Create name selection. This is the water inlet. Click OK. I'm going to rotate around to the other side and select the outlet. Now, ANSYS is really good at recognizing the boundary conditions so that when we go into the setup it's going to automatically recognize where the outlet is or outlets it's going to automatically set the pressures to zero gauge meaning that there's no positive or negative pressure basically that everything's free to run through um, that outlet and it also recognizes the other inlets so that you can set up the boundary conditions of your um, your the speed of your fluids going um, in we also want to name the walls right so everything that isn't about uh, an inlet or outlet right so this is selected you're going to hold down the control key so you can select multiple faces and you're going to select every face that you can see that isn't an inlet or outlet Hold down control, okay, and just spin around, make sure that every section is selected, that you didn't miss anything, and see I missed something there, click this, hold down control, you want to just double check, verify that you're not missing any faces, um, otherwise it could throw off your simulation because we're going to select a um, a uh, contact angle, basically, between the wall 
in the um, the films. I mean, the liquids. Uh, and so that'll that'll help. And this also selecting all these sections and selecting as a wall, which we'll show here in a moment, is going to help with the inflation. Okay. Right click, create name selection, wall. Click OK. And if you click here in the name sections, you can see here we have the inlet oil, inlet water, outlet, wall. Okay. When I open the mesh, you can see here. Excuse me, you can see here that all these things are defaulted. And if I go ahead and generate a mesh, you're going to see it's going to create a very, 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 very simple mesh. Now, obviously, this mesh is not good. Uh, it's too big. So if we go in here and do 4.5, e to the negative 6, and click Generate, we should see a mesh that is identical to the setup that we did from Senior 1. And oops. And indeed, it looks um, identical. But now we want to um, we want to refine the mesh around the surface, right? Because we want we recognize that the changes that go on here are not that different. Like in other words, um, the difference between you know, this mesh here and this mesh, there's not much of a difference as far as the changes as there is between this mesh and this mesh. That's because, you know, as you know, that there's um, boundary conditions um, that, that happen along the wall, surface adhesions, different things that happen. So there's more stuff going on. So we want to introduce an inflation. Uh, so for that, what I'm going to do is go here into inflation. And I'm going to select this and do all faces. Now I tried program control before. Um, it did not work out the way I wanted it. So we're going to do all faces and chosen name selection. And this is where creating, selecting all the faces for the wall come in handy. Because when I click this and I click wall, it's going to recognize that wherever the walls are, it's going to do a surface inflation at that section. Okay, I'm going to generate just to see what kind of mesh we're looking at. Um, sometimes it takes a little while to just mess with the mesh and try different things to see what comes out. Um, one thing we want to look for is to make sure that we don't have too many elements. Um, ANSI's student edition has 500,000 elements, which, I mean, sorry. ANSI student edition allows up to 500,000 elements, which is a lot. So when we run the program and doing the simulation, it's going to take a long time uh, to process everything, a um, little bit too much. So bear with me one second here. I want to check how many elements we're looking at. And I apologize because for some reason, um, my like when I refresh go down it doesn't the screen's not updating and I have to minimize restore to look to see what's going on I'm gonna move this up a bit statistic okay so you see here that the elements were at 531,000 that's way too much and so we want to try to think about ways to reduce this number um one thing we can do is see the maximum layers. This is the layers that we have of an inflation between the surface and the other sections. So you can see we did five here. So it's essentially breaking this down. So if I change this to three, it should reduce this number here will be three. Um, and we should save on some of the meshing. We also want to look at the quality. So smoothing, medium, I think that's okay. I may need to look at also reduce. Um, I'm sorry, increasing the size of the elements. Um, and so let's let's try that. So let's go to six. Okay. Um, let's go ahead and change this to three. And remember, Doctor Boymo Green was saying that, you know, 
um, you could stop increasing, refining your mesh when you don't get a change between one iteration and the next. And so I don't want to automatically just go, um, you know, go go ham and do um, crazy mesh refinement. I want to kind of do it in incremental steps um, because it might not be necessary to do this many elements. Obviously, if we can get a good mesh that's at, let's say, 200,000 elements, and it's good, and it's no di there's not a big difference between using 200 and 300, then we know that we can use the 200,000 element, whatever that setting is, on the um, uh, for the other channels. And so I'm going to um, leave this as medium smoothing. Um, and let me see one second. Okay, so we're going to click three layers. Let's generate. Okay. So 190,000 elements, um, that's a step up from the 100,000 elements, I believe, that we had before. And so I think that's going to be, I think that's going to be a decent setting. Um, there wasn't, I mean, obviously, like, if you look at the size of this element, this element right here is, you know, appears a bit bigger than the one before. Um... But yeah, I, I, I think we're okay. Let's check a work here. Okay, but like the important thing we can see here is that there's there's a refinement um, going along here that, you know, the, the change from this to this obviously is going to be different. Um, as you can remember that the slug that we had was you know, taking up the space here, but there was a lot of space in between here. So hopefully, hopefully this refines um, um, the mesh. And so I think we're good. I think I showed everything that I need to show with regard to to this. We increase the size of the element a little bit to make it so there's not as many elements. Um, smoothing medium, maximum layers three. And when we run this simulation, then we can see how different it is from the last one. And then we can also go back and, and, and change some things, maybe make the elements smaller. So I'm going to go ahead and um, save the project. I'm going to close this out. And you can see this little lightning bolt. We can just right click, update. And it should update everything. We should get a green check mark here in a moment. Hopefully. Cool. Okay. So that does it for part two. Um, part three, we're going to do go through the setup. And thanks for watching.